Hello friends, it's my favorite time. Time to get crafty with something new from scrapbook.com. Are you ready for it? Look at this magic. The new pops of color from scrapbook.com. I am gonna take these and make a really simple mixed media background of, with a really fun technique. And then we're going to create a layout using my new sweet brush collection. So grab all of your things. I'm gonna show you what you need and we're gonna get started making something fun and crafty using these new little bottles of magic from scrapbook.com. Let's go. Okay, I've gathered all of my things that I'm gonna to need to create a lovely background and then a scrapbook page. So you will need your, of course, lovely new pops of color. These uh, new colors are beautiful. I'm excited to use these. It's a great palette. I am going to use some exclusive dyes from scrapbook.com, so you want some border dyes. Uh, the background I'm gonna use, or the base, is going to be my foundations paper from American Crafts. It's a great, sturdy, um, background or uh, base for mixed media. I am going to use a scraping tool. So I have the scrapbook.com scraper and I have my art wedge. And uh, if you don't have these, you could use a old gift card or an old room key, just something that's straight edge, uh, a straight edge and has a little bit of weight to it. And then I'm going to use my new collection Sweet Rush for the actual scrapbook page. So that's all you're gonna need, plus your basic tools. But uh, grab what you have. If you don't have Sweet Rush, that's fine. Just something that will match the color palette we're using. And let's get started. I've grabbed what I need to get started. You're gonna want your pops of color, your base, whatever you're using, your scraper tool. I have a mister with some water and some paper towels for cleanup between colors. I am laying it out in the orange color, the yellow, the green, the uh, minty color, the turquoise, the blue, purple, and pink. I might even put a little pink at the beginning, but this is kind of the palette that, um, or the direction or order I wanna use these colors in. And we're gonna get started. I'm going to use my little container to pop them up just so it's easy to grab. You can put them in this way. I find when I'm working, and then when you need to close the lid, you just pop them around the other way, but super helpful. Keeps everything kind of neat and tidy and it's not rolling all over my background. So you want to make sure as you pull that you position your paper, whatever is the easiest way to actually pull the color. I actually want skips and dips and broken kind of um, pattern. So you don't want to put a lot of color down. Less is more. You can always add, but you can't take away once it's all on there, right? So when you get started, don't put too much medium down. Have your paper towels ready or uh, uh, art cloth, anything just to wipe up so you can move pretty quickly between your colors. And also kind of keep in mind that you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colors that I'm putting down. I want to make sure that uh, spatially I have enough space. So don't go too crazy with it. Just a little bit to start, you can always put some more on there. So I think I wanna start with pink and end with pink. So I'm gonna go on here and just put a couple of dots. And then you can decide what you want to use. If you want to use your um, scraper, or I'm going to have my art wedge too and just decide uh, what one's gonna work best for this technique. But you wanna get in here and just kind of move that medium around. So you have kind of that broken pattern. Drag it out. So a little bit of pink. Okay, clean my scraper off and I can go in with the next color. So I'm gonna put some orange down here. I'm gonna start a little bit lower. And I'm okay if the two colors overlap as well. Now I like to do mine one at a time. You can do whatever works for you and really kind of scrape it and move it around because you get a lot more interest when you have your pattern overlapping and dragging and broken. Okay, and I'm just gonna move on with the rest of the colors and then we'll come back and I'm gonna show you the next step.
Okay, that's it. Laid my colors down. It creates this beautiful kind of rainbow background. And um, you'll find some of the colors are a little bit lighter. You might want to let this dry and go in and layer another um, section on. Whatever makes you happy. Whenever you're happy with your finished result, you're ready for the next step. So I'm going to let this completely dry. And then we're going to add a couple of fun little polka dots on here. And the other thing you want to remember is you want to create two of these backgrounds because we're going to die cut out of one and we're going to use one as our full 12 by 12 background. So make sure you make two, let them both dry, and then we'll move on to the second step for our finished background. So I've created so I've created a number of these. I think it's worthwhile to practice. You could use these and die cut out of them uh, with your uh, Cricut or your Silhouette or your die cutting machine. We are going to use one of these for a manual die cut with the um, border background. It's going to be super fun. We're going to cut them into strips and then just create a second layer. And then what's nice is make sure when you place them on there that you're kind of conscious of where you're putting the die because then you also have these backgrounds that could layer and make another uh, fun base for a project, card, layout, whatever you wanna make. So I'm gonna take one of these backgrounds now, I'm gonna to show you, that, that was a mouthful, and I'm gonna show you the other thing that I like to do with the pops of color. So let's just go with this one. I think that one is still drying. So I'm gonna pick the end that I kind of like the finish on. And I think on this one, it's this end. And I'm gonna use them traditionally like little enamel dots. So what I wanna create here is um, a whole bunch of little polka dots that go lower and higher with each color. So when we finish this layout, the whole side of it can have a little bit of interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that that is in the shot and I'm gonna go and put some little polka dots of color smaller and larger so just go in and put them as a dot creating kind of a little family of circles and then the way I like to finish these off is to tap underneath so it looks nice but they're kind of um, all different sizes so I find if you just go in here and tap on your background or on your base, you can make them little polka dots of color. See, they just flatten out into little circles. And I'm gonna continue that with the next color. So we went in with the pink. I'm gonna go in with some purple, a little bit higher up. Okay, I have the polka dots done and I remembered, I flick. Just give the paper a flick. Be careful on your placement too of the little dots so they don't blend in together too much. But I love that, let me flick on this end. See, oh, flattens those little peaks out right away. I love it, quickest enamel dots, love that. You can do these on a sheet of uh, wax paper as well and make them so you can remove them. But I love that. Let's let this completely dry 
and I'm gonna grab all my stuff so we can die cut. I'm gonna show you how I die cut the strips so we can get a little bit of layer, on, or pardon me, a little bit of texture on the background of our page. So let me grab those bits and we can set this aside so you don't put anything in it and let it completely dry. And then we will start building the layout after we make the die cut pieces. So I have my ancient die cutting uh, machine and you could totally use your magic mat. I don't know where mine is right now, so uh, but the magic mat would work beautifully with your dies. I am gonna go through and cut out every other color in the solid scallop and the heart scallop from the Slim Border set. And I'm just gonna do that, and I'm gonna speed through the video just to show you what we're doing, but nothing um, groundbreaking here. Just grab the dies that you wanna use. Cut your extra sh uh, sheet into strips and then go ahead and then just cut out each pattern and we're going to have those for a little bit of extra texture on our layout. So go ahead and just cut out your dies or your patterns out of each color and then we'll move on to the next step. So, okay, there is the last one. Oh my goodness, how pretty is this, right? Look how pretty those are. So it's just another way to use, let me get all this stuff out of the way. And don't forget, all these scraps are magic. We can layer pattern paper under, sew them, use them for a card. So don't throw these away. Everything that we can use and has purpose, well, it all has purpose, we can do something magical with, including all the little tiny hearts. Okay, so let me move this stuff out of the way and then I'm gonna grab all of my stuff for the scrapbooking side of things, okay? Let's go! So I made a number of backgrounds. I was practicing the technique and seeing how much color I needed, how much pressure I needed. So I have actually quite a few of these and I love them. I'll use them for multiple things. I can punch some shapes out of, like I said, run it through die cuts, use it for a card. So I have this one that I had created and everything is dried. Um, so you'll see I tested a little stenciling on here, but then decided I kind of liked this kind of textural look with using the tone on tone with the die cut pieces and our little enamel dot looking bits. So what we're gonna do is just kind of lay out our pattern and then decide how I wanna put these down. And I'm gonna to talk to you about my idea for the scrapbooking side of things. But I love this, look how pretty that is. So even if you are not a traditional paper crafter, so maybe you don't make layouts, you're more into the whole um, card side of things, you could totally do that as well. You could make a card. You don't have to make a scrapbook page, but I'm going to stagger these and then we can attach them. You could totally sew on here if you wanted to. And then, like I said, I had already kind of planned what I wanted to do. So my photo is slightly smaller than a four by six. And this is a picture I just took recently or Rich took it, my husband, and I have to give him credit because he's like, did you tell everybody I took the picture? I'm like, I did not. So let me rectify that. So I cut two mats out of the six by eight Sweet Rush pad, a four and a half by six and a five by six. So they can just stagger and go in this bottom corner. And um, I can decide now where I want my bits to go. So when you're doing mixed media backgrounds, I find you don't have to necessarily cover everything, right? One really awesome focal point photo is enough or two smaller photos. Um, you could totally make this into a double page layout just by making the exact same pattern and maybe flipping the pattern to the opposite side and just cutting double the borders and then repeat. So you could do a whole different thing on the other side. But I've opted 
just for one focal point photo that's going to go in this bottom corner with the layered bits and then I'm just going to embellish. So let's go ahead and I'm going to quickly attach the little um, strips that we die cut. And now that my photo's kind of here, I have an idea of how I want this to go. And I'm going to attach these down. Like I said, you could totally grab your sewing machine and stitch these on. I think it would be awesome. Just tack them with a little glue and then put a stitch through it, which maybe I'll do after the fact and share that with you or on a second layout. But just for time's sake now, I'm just going to go ahead and glue those down. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I'm putting the last one down. Now we'll see if I'm gonna cover all of this anyway because all of my embellishments are gonna kinda of go in this section, but it's okay, I'm just gonna go with it. See, that little bit of added texture is lots of fun and you could totally, like I said, go on and stitch right over top of these and coordinating colors of thread. You could go in with black, white, whatever you wanna do, but it could look really cute but I love all of that texture going on with which really adds to the fun of uh, mixed media backgrounds. So now I'm going to just go ahead and embellish and I know I want the uh, little navy mat down in the bottom corner and then the heart one is gonna go, kinda go on top. I'm gonna offset it a bit. This one I'm gonna make come right flush to the edge of the page. And then I already know I cut this little piece. I used the bottom of it on another layout. And this is out of one of the ephemera packs from Sweet Rush. And I know I want it to go on top like that. So just gonna kind of lay out my bits. I know my photo is gonna go on here like this. And then I have this pretty butterfly, which I think works with all of the orange and pink at the top. It's going to kind of go somewhere like this. And then I have a camera because this is a fun little photo. And I know it's going to go in this section here somewhere. I might shift everything over just a little bit just so I don't cover up everything on the side. And then I have this little title I think is perfect. Just loving this. And it's going to be going kind of here, making a whole little cluster. And then the little vellum hello. Is going to layer on here so I'm just gonna start popping some of these pieces down you don't have to reinvent the wheel when you're doing mixed media you have all of this lovely going on so keeping your story just in one corner um, just with some layered bits with foam dots we'll add some chipboard and stuff on here um, you could totally put some journaling strips on the little strips that you've already cut that would be really fun to tell your story with some journaling strips in maybe like a black you could handwrite them or type them uh, it would add lots of interest to the page but now comes the fun we're going to start popping some things up with some foam so i know that i'm going to be popping this little bit up here so i'm going to go ahead and do that I know that I will be popping this bit up just in the corners so that it looks like a curved old piece of, oops, you throw your foam dot off of it. So I will put a little tape just in the middle and I'm going to go ahead and commit that piece here. Like that. Let's move that down a little bit. And I know that's going to go on there like that. Okay. I'm going to glue my navy mat down now. Oh, it's so much fun um, mixing my two loves. I love paper crafting and memory keeping. And I love doing artful backgrounds. So you totally can have lots of fun with this. 
And don't be afraid to try the mixed media because all it is is a piece of paper in your time, right? You can accomplish lots of things just through practice and play. And I find that um, these pops of color have so many uses, right? It's a multiple use product, which is awesome because it's not just going to work as maybe like little enamel dots or 3D um, texture, but you can also use it to create fun backgrounds. You could put it through your stencil. There are so many ideas on um, scrapbook.com's YouTube and on their, um, what do you call that? I just forgot, in their gallery. So definitely make sure that you check out all of the um, other amazing ideas from lots of talented crafters because you will find it's nice when you invest in a product that you can find lots of different uses for it. So it isn't just part of your creating um, toolbox, your creative toolbox, you actually use the stuff, right? So super helpful to do a little bit of investigation and find all of the different ways that you can use product. I know for a fact that I want my camera popped up, so I'm gonna stick him or her or it on here first and then we can layer our bits around it so I like to pick out my main pieces of um, ephemera or whatever I'm building my pattern with and then I'll start to go back in and fill it in with stickers and different bits so I I love that little story that that's telling I love that it's tying all the colors in that are in the on the page already so we will just Commit with some adhesive. Decide where I want pop dots. Uh, I think right there. And then we will pop that up a little bit. Foam adhesive is your friend. And sometimes I will double up my foam adhesive. And uh, a lot of times, even when I'm building, I don't need to take the backs off. Right? And then make sure you just go in and give everything a little bit of curl. It gives it a little bit of movement and fun. I'm gonna pop that up too, okay? Love that. Now we have the little vellum piece, which you could attach if you wanted to, just with your tiny attacher. So I could go in here if I wanted. I could have done this beforehand, but of course, why would we make anything easy? So I'm just gonna kind of lay it out where I want it. I think that looks good. Put a little staple in there. It's a fun way to adhere or attach your vellum and then you don't have to worry about um, if your adhesive will show. So I'm just gonna go in there. Like I said, would be much easier if you did it ahead of time, but I did not, so. But I made it work, right? I love it. And the pink and the orange on this vellum piece ties in with a butterfly in the camera. And like I said, I'm going to put loving this here and I'm going to pop it up. You could totally go in with some different uh, thickers or different title option, but that works for me. And then I'm going to try to tie a little bit of the black in in other ways. Uh, let's go ahead. Just kind of tack that down for now. And then I can decide what I want to do. I'm gonna pop the L up. So I like to cut my foam squares just to make them work for me. And I think that will be nice. That'll pop it up on the camera. So let's go ahead, adhere that, and then pick out some different um, chipboard enamel dot just to finish this off. Oh, I'm okay with covering up what's going on in that corner. Loving this. There we go. See, fun so far, right? Lots of dimension. And go with the photos. Like, I don't love this picture of myself, but I love the story that it tells with my funky little shoes. So I went with it anyway, even though it wasn't my favorite. So in um, Sweet Rush, we have these uh, thickers or chipboard, and I love this little turquoise mint piece that I think we could put on the photo like that. And, or actually, I'm just gonna put it on the piece in the back. 
like this so I don't cover my words. And then that ties your mint in as well, maybe even on this corner. I like it over here because I could put another sticker there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add a little piece of foam to that and go ahead and attach that on an angle in the corner. I have to move my foam a little bit. Very fun, very fun. Just grab your stuff and use them. Use it all to make pretty little scrapbook pages, like I said, or cards, whatever tickles your fancy. Stick an extra piece there. And now I'm just gonna embellish it to finish it. So the camera is just screaming for some kind of enamel dot. So I have lots of different things. I have these. Um, little sprinkles from Doodlebug. We could put a heart in the middle, which could be fun. Right? Just a little heart. This one, this one. Size, a little heart. In the middle of the camera, just for a little bit of a dimensional pop. If that reads well, I'm not sure on the camera or on the uh, video because a lot of times the Anything that's foiled or metallic, you can't really see. But I don't really feel like it needs too much more. I'm just gonna go in later and decide what I want for my journaling. And I could handwrite it right on there, but probably journaling strips. And then I might still add a couple stitches on there. But I love that. Wasn't that fun using the new Pops of Color and some texture to create a really fun and simple layout or it could be for a card or a mini album or in your um, art journal, whatever you wanna do. But I love that. Let me flip the camera and I'm gonna just show you the finish. Oh my goodness, friends, that was so much fun. A super easy and fun background using the new pops of color from scrapbook.com. I love these, great palette, really easy product to use, inexpensive, and you get wonderful results. And then we put all of that magic together to make a simple and fun layout. Oh, I love it so much. And a little bit of my new Sweet Rush from American Crafts. So I hope you guys get a chance to give this uh, technique a test drive. Make sure that you tag me so that I can see all the magic you're making and um, spread lots of love. If you haven't already, make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. And if you haven't, give it a little thumbs up and post some comments so I can uh, get your feedback and hear a little bit of what you'd like to see me make in the future. And as always, thank you so much for joining me and a special thanks to scrapbook.com for sending me this awesome new product. And I can't wait to see what you guys make with it. So we'll see you later.